I want to just uh, say a big thank you to uh, John Fry and to the band. Uh, last Sunday when I was out of town um, working on a project that is going to be uh, about starting 20 new churches that within five years of their start will be worshiping 500 or more, uh, part of a project called the Antioch Project, of which our own Ray Miller is going to be a part of. Um, it was a really great event, but what amazed me is to be able to go out of town and know that worship will go off without a hitch. I mean, that is a real sign of a healthy congregation. So again, I thank John, I thank Stephanie and the rest of the band for just easing my concern and knowing that everything will be amazing. It's okay. He's just so excited to get out there. And uh, another thing, some of you probably already have been sending money to the Red Cross, uh, Salvation Army, other programs that are helping in response to the hurricane. But our denominational response is called Week of Compassion. And they're already on the ground, both in the New York area and New Jersey, but also in the Caribbean. One of the things that they provide is called um, uh, basically a cleanup kit. It's a five-gallon bucket that includes um, rags, it includes Clorox, it includes clean, other cleaning supplies, and it's just to be brought into people's homes as they are trying to uh, clean up after flooding. Um, so if you want to give a little gift to that in, on your check, just uh, memo line, week of compassion, uh, my son, as we were talking about this last night, he's giving $5 this morning to, uh, to that project as well. So I hope you will consider. This morning we are looking at Paul's letter, his first letter to the church at Corinth. Corinth was a, a very cosmopolitan town and so a very diverse city. Um, and yet Paul was concerned about this faith community, a young faith community, and he, he picks it up in, towards the end of the letter with these words. Now, brothers and sisters, you know that members of the household of Stephanus were the first converts in Ikea, and they have devoted themselves to the service of the saints. I urge you to put yourselves at the service of such people and of everyone who works and toils with them. I rejoice in the coming of Stephanus and Fortunatus and Achaicus, because they have made up for your absence, for they refreshed my spirit as well as yours. So give recognition to such persons. The churches of Asia send greetings. Aquila and Priscilla, together with the churches in their house, greet you warmly in the Lord. May God richly bless these words of Scripture. Humble thyself in the sight of the Lord Humble thyself in the sight of the Lord And He will lift you up Higher and higher And He will lift you up Humble thyself in the sight of the Lord Humble thyself in the sight of the Lord, and He will lift you up higher and higher, and He will lift you up. You pray with me. God, your amazing grace is what has invited us together as this community. Some folks are longtime members, others are wandering into this place for the first time. But however we come, we know that your love will spill over us, that your grace will welcome us. Now may the words of Scripture and the words of my mouth be acceptable to you. Amen. A few years back, 
I was at the pet store buying chinchilla food. The only animal that we found that we could have in our house because of my wife's allergies was chinchillas. We don't have them anymore. We gave them when we moved, gave them away. But I was at the pet store and had my bag of chinchilla food at the front counter. I gave my debit card to the young lady. She looked at it and said, can I see some ID? Pulled out my driver's license, gave, him, gave it to her. She looked at it, looked at the debit card. And as she was handing back my driver's license, she said, thank you, Mr. Froggy? Froge, I said. Oh, she, I said, I, I, I'm sorry, has anybody else made that mistake? Yeah, yeah, quite often. Oh, froggy. <laughs> she just kept on saying it. Froggy. Even as she ran and handed me, my, handed me my receipt, as I was walking out the door with my bag of chinchilla food in my hand, I heard her kind of go, <laughs> froggy, that's funny. <laughs> I'm guessing she remembered my name for a while. How do you do when it comes to remembering names? I mean, there are some folks that just have an amazing gift. I mean, they meet a person once and just, they remember the name, they remember the face. But for the rest of us, there has to be something significant, something memorable for us to go, oh yeah, that's who that person is. And inevitably give us a couple of months, some time away, our bad memories, and we run into that person and we go, oh my gosh, what is her name? We've all been there. We've all been there. But the Apostle Paul seems interested in sharing some names, the names of people that he remembers. He references Priscilla and Aquila. Folks that were probably well known in the life of the church. They're mentioned in other books of the Bible, other letters that Paul wrote. So they had to have been well connected individuals. But there are other names that are referenced here Stephanus, Fortunatus, Achaicus, names that only appear here in this letter that Paul writes. And, and it's interesting that we don't even have much context. We don't have much background information. We couldn't even write a small paragraph giving a little bio about these people. All we know is that they refreshed Paul's spirit. No other information whatsoever. That's all we have about these people. But at least they got their names mentioned. He said they got their names in writing it and written by somebody like Paul. I mean, that's pretty amazing. A few years back, I was asked to give the opening prayer at the NCAA Championship Bowling Banquet. <laughs> yes, the National Championship uh, bowling tournament was in Kansas City when I was there, and uh, they had a banquet the night after, and I was asked to give the prayer. Us pastors get some pretty crazy gigs. But as I was getting, to the, getting into, the, uh, into the event, I was introduced to the guy who was going to be emceeing. And he was a pretty famous person in the Kansas City area. He did the color commentary for the Kansas City Chiefs radio broadcast, and we met each other there for the first time, shook hands, I introduced myself, and, and then we went and sat down. He got the crowd kind of under control, and he said, now, we're going to have a prayer, an opening prayer here from my, my close personal friend, uh, the, the Reverend Bruce, and I could tell he's kind of trailing off and leaning toward me. I leaned toward him, I said, Froge. The Reverend Bruce Froggy. He didn't even get it right. But I tell you, there is still something about having someone famous introduce you. I mean, to have somebody who calls you his close personal friend. I mean, it was one of the biggest lies I've ever been a part of, but it still was something great to have him say that. 
But what happens when the person introducing you doesn't really introduce you? Paul mentions five names, five specific names, and then he says this, I urge you to put yourselves at the service of such people and of everyone who works and toils with them. Who is this everyone who works and toils? I mean, it sounds like one of those phrases that you might hear at the Academy Awards, one of those kind of cover your backside kind of statements. You know, you just won the Academy Award and you're up there thanking everyone and, and you say, finally, I, and there's so many others who got me to this place. You know who you are. Just kind of leaving that vague statement out there, just to make sure that if somebody says, you didn't thank me personally, well, I did, kind of. But I don't think that's what Paul really intended here. Because I think when he speaks about all these other people who worked and toiled, those that were reading the letter, they knew who Paul was referring to. This wasn't just fluff to cover those whose feelings might be hurt otherwise. This everyone who worked and toiled was a very specific group whose lives and witness, whose actions and sacrifices had made a dramatic impact upon the life of the early church. Yet their names are not mentioned. The folks, their names will not go down in history. In fact, these names won't appear on a plaque or in some program. I would guess that there's not a person alive that could name even one of those people that fell under the heading of everyone who worked and toiled. But their impact, their witness, continues to pulse through the veins of the body of Christ, even to this day. And around here at Cypress Creek Christian Church, names like Curtis and Bill and Shirley and Marvin, Becky, Ted, Boone, John, Patricia, Glory, and the list could go on and on. Names of those that were here in the early years. People who made sure that this place became the church that it is today. People who have since died. And yet in my mentioning them, there are some of you who knew exactly who I was talking about. An image popped to your head. I remember that person. And yet, let us be honest, they did not do what they did in hopes of us remembering their name. They did not do what they did hoping that we would put a plaque on a wall somewhere with their name on it. When I was a kid, there was this beautiful park I loved to go to. It had a wonderful wooded area a wonderful running path, and there was a stream that ran through it. And, and i just go there and I would play sometimes. And one of my visits, though, as I was approaching the park, the main entrance was closed off. It was all dug up. And there was a big uh, sign with an arrow that pointed over to the right, entered this way. So I went around the trees and through another gate and entered the park and didn't think much of it. A few weeks later, I came back to the park. And I found that the entrance was open again, and now there was this beautiful red brick. Ran for about 50 feet to a little fountain. Thought it was kind of cool. I went running across the red brick, entered the park, and went off to do my things, and never took notice, I wasn't the most aware kid in the world, that each one of those bricks had a name on it. It wasn't until I was in graduate school and back visiting my mom, out for a run, and going into that park, that as I was running, I found myself looking down, twisting my head, looking at all these names that over the years I had completely missed. Names of people who had donated money, who had given to themselves for the sake of the park. And as I ran past the little fountain and made the loop around the park, all I could think about was all these people that had given so much of who they 
were for the sake of this park. As I came back around and, and slowed down as I approached the, the brick path, catching my breath after the run, I, I noticed a guy who was kind of leaning over, looking at one of the bricks. And as I got close to him, I said, somebody you know? He kind of stood up and shook his head and he said, no. But then he said something that has forever stayed with me. He kind of looked back down. He said, you know, though, I, I don't think Dorothy here probably gave her money so that I would look at a brick with her name on it. I think she gave it for a different reason. And he gestured toward the park. She didn't do. None of those people did what they did so that centuries from now we would be looking at those bricks as they'd worn down trying to figure out the name there was another reason. And the saints of the church haven't done what they have done so that their name could be put up in light somewhere. They didn't expect that their name would be remembered. In fact, they probably, many of them, just assumed that they would fall under that general category of everyone who worked and toiled. But at the end of the day, it wasn't about their name. It was about another name, a name that is above all names. They did what they did so that you and I and generations to follow would know the name of Jesus. This morning we are celebrating, invite the band back up, we are celebrating the saints who have over the last year died. People who have, in their own way, been a witness. And even though 50 years from now, 100 years from now, many of these folks may not be remembered but by their immediate family, many of them did what they did, not so that they would get all the attention, so that their name would be remembered. These people did what they did so that we, and generations to follow would know one name, the name of Jesus.